have a Rails application which is designed to display a gallery of paintings, but currently there aren't any paintings, so let me add one by clicking this link, and that brings us to a forum where we can upload a new image. So I'll upload one here, and I'll give it a name, and then choose Create Painting, and there we go, that resized the image for us and cropped it, so it displays it in the gallery. Now this file upload behavior is handled by Carrier Wave, which I covered in detail in episode 253. Let me walk you through the code briefly here. I have a painting model, which is where I call mount uploader, and this is a image uploader class, which is a subclass of the carrier wave uploader. And uh, this is a pretty standard uploader here, and I just have a thumbnail version, uh, which resizes the image using our magic, and this is what is displayed in the gallery page. Now the issue is that I can only create one painting at a time. It would be nice if I could upload multiple images at once right on the gallery page. So let's do that. I want a file upload button here where I can just select multiple images. So here is that index template where I am displaying those paintings. And instead of having this link to add a single painting, I want a form where I can upload multiple paintings at a time. So something like this, where I'm calling form four and giving it a painting record just to uh, have something in the form. And then I can call file field to uh, upload uh, painting images. So reloading this page, and we now have uh, this choose file field where I can select a painting. And right now I can only select one painting at a time. If I hold down shift, it doesn't allow me to select multiple paintings. To solve this, I can go to my file field and pass in the multiple option and set it to true. And then in some browsers, this will allow me to select multiple images uh, in the upload dialog box. However, there is an issue with this. And if we view the source code, and then I'll scroll down to the uh, form field here. Uh, you can see the name of this uh, file input field has square brackets at the end of it, which means it's going to submit it as an array to our Rails application. Unfortunately, this causes some issues with Carrier Wave, so we'll need to resolve this. There are many different ways that we can handle this situation, but here one of the simplest is just to hard code the name into here, just passing painting uh, image as the field name which this will need to be changed if you rename the model or the attribute used to upload the file. So with that change, there are no longer square brackets at the end of the file input field name, which means it won't be submitted as an array. However, this means that if we do select multiple files, only one of them will be used to create a painting. But this is where a JavaScript library can intervene and allow us to upload multiple files at once. Here I will be using the jQuery file upload library to do this. It's quite polished and allows us to upload multiple files at a time. I can select them and just choose start upload and we get progress bars and everything nicely handled by jQuery file upload. Now there are a couple of different ways that we could set this up. Uh, one option is known as the UI version, and uh, this is great if you need just a quick way to get a file upload working, and it also works best if you're using Twitter Bootstrap, but it makes a lot of decisions for you. The other option is a minimal setup, which just uses the basic upload functionality and leaves the user interface up to you. This allows you to customize it further and really make it fit and integrate into your existing interface. It gives you more flexibility and it's what I'll be demonstrating here in this episode. Now we still need to integrate this library into the Rails asset pipeline, and for that I'll be using the jQuery file upload Rails gem. Uh, this gives us several files that we can require. One will just require the full UI version, but we also have a basic version that we can require inside of our application JS file, which will do just what I want. Well, let's get started. Going into the assets group of the gem file of this Rails application, I'm going to add in that jQuery file upload Rails gem, and then you'll need to run the bundle command to install it. Next, I'll go into the assets application JS file and add a require line here for the jQuery file upload a basic file as demonstrated in the readme. Now I still need to add this functionality to the file upload form on the paintings page. So I'm going to do that inside of the paintings JS coffee script file. First, I'll make sure that the DOM is loaded and then I'll grab that form, which is, uh, I'll just use the new painting ID, but you can use something else if you want to uh, give it a different ID. And then I just call file upload on it, which will use that library. And let's leave it at its default settings for now. Now, after a quick restart of our application and reloading this page, uh, this file upload form is now imbued with some jQuery functionality. So if I try uploading multiple files here and say choose, 
and it doesn't look like it really did anything, but if I reload this page, you can see the paintings are there, just to happen to upload them in the background. So it's important to understand that when I select multiple files here, it's going to submit this form separately for each of the individual files, which ends up creating a new painting record because it triggers the paintings controller create action multiple times, which creates uh, multiple paintings. Now what I would like it to do is instantly show the painting here in this gallery once the file is fully uploaded without the user needing to reload the page. To accomplish this, I first need to customize this file upload call because it accepts various options which you can pass in here. One is called data type, and this is the data type it expects back from the server. So uh, most examples demonstrate using JSON. So this means our Rails application will need to generate some JSON, and then on the client side, we would need to render the painting in the gallery. However, this usually leads to a duplication between the server side and the client side for the view template, and I just find it easier in these kind of situations to work with JavaScript instead. So this will expect a script to be generated from a Rails application and will be executed when it's submitted back after the file uploads. This means we need to change the paintings controller create action, which is pretty standard here, but instead of handling HTML, I want to just return some JavaScript. Uh, while we could support both HTML and JavaScript formats, I'm just going to keep things simple here and just use a JavaScript template. So I'm going to call a painting.create, so it creates the record, and then I'll make a template called create.js.erb. Now to save us some time, I'm just going to paste the content for this template, but it's pretty simple. I just do a check to see if the painting is a new record, which means it must have failed validations. And if so, I'm just going to display an alert message with the validation error messages, but you might want to handle validations differently in your application. And then if it saves successfully, then I'm just going to append the uh, rendered partial of the painting to the paintings div, so it'll show up in the gallery. So let's try this out by reloading this page and then uploading a couple of files. And I wanna show you another neat feature of jQuery file upload, and that is drag and drop. So I can actually upload files by just dragging and dropping them to this page instead of having to choose them from the dialog. And you can see they instantly show up without me having to reload the page when they get uploaded, which is really awesome. However, there are some layout issues, which you can see here, primarily because these paintings don't have a name. This is a common problem when you're dealing with multi-file uploads because the user isn't entering much information to put in the database. Uh, so to work around this, you might want to set some default values based on the files that are uploaded. So uh, you might do something like this in the painting model where we have a before create callback, which sets a default name based on the image file that we're uploading, the file name. And then we can just titleize this to pretty it up. So now when we upload a file, it will give it a nice default name. Now so far, the files that we've been uploading appear nearly instantly since it's just on the local machine. But if it's across a slow connection, it could be even minutes before the files actually show up. And during this time, it would be nice to provide some user feedback, maybe through a progress bar. So what I want is a progress bar to show up for each separate file immediately after the user chooses the files to upload. So this will need to be all on the client side, which means for convenience, it would be nice if we had some kind of way to render some client side template. To do this, I'm going to go back to the application.js file and add in a new require statement for the uh, vendor slash tmpl library, which is included within the jQuery file upload gem. And this will allow us to easily uh, render out a template which is embedded inside of the HTML. So going into the index HTML view, I'm just going to paste in the code for this template. Uh, so this is just a script tag with a special tmpl type and this will allow us to put some HTML inside of here, which we can choose to render on command through JavaScript. And we can have special tags in here to reference an object that is passed in to add in dynamic content. And notice that this just includes a couple divs to handle the uh, progress bar. Next, I need to add some options to this file upload call to render that template. And it looks something like this. This is quite a bit of code, but let me walk you through it. First, I have this add option, which I supply a function, and this will get triggered when a new file is added. So each separate file that is added, even if multiple are selected, this is going to be triggered, and it provides us a data object, which we can use to fetch various information, such as the file object, which we can pass into the template, 
which is called template upload. That is going to reference the tag that I added to the uh, HTML template. And that way it'll render that template. And then we can toss it in a jQuery context. And then I'm going to set this to a att context attribute on the data object so I can reference it later. So I'm just going to append this to the uh, new painting form. Just pass that data context directly into it. And then I can call data.submit, which is going to actually trigger the uploading of that file. And then next I'm setting this progress callback function, which uh, basically just updates the progress bar. First I check if the data context is set, which I set up here. And if so, then we can just find the progress bar inside of that rendered template and then change its width value depending on the current progress of the upload. Oh, and I guess I don't need that semicolon since we're in uh, CoffeeScript. All right, now let's try this out. I've cleared the database so we have a clean slate. And let's try uploading a couple of files. And you can see that progress was very fast, but the templates are shown below here, which I've already uh, stylized with some CSS in the background. And you can see the progress bar is already filled with green because it was so fast. But let me choose a larger file here, and let's see that progress bar go. You can see it fills up as it's copying the file. And then once it's finished processing, we get this alert dialog because it failed the validation. It's a zip file, and our application only allows image type files. Now, wouldn't it be better, though, if we did some validation on the client side so we didn't have to completely upload the file before it showed that validation error? We can do this pretty easily by changing this add callback function in the JavaScript, uh, changing it to something like this, where we select a specific set of file types, such as GIF, JPEG, and image, and then we just check to see if that file type matches that uh, regular expression or if the file name does. And if so, we'll allow it. Otherwise, we'll display that alert dialog. So with this change, it won't even bother trying to upload the zip file before it displays any kind of validation error. Well, this example is pretty much complete now. We have a gallery where we can just upload files with a simple drag and drop, and it will show us progress and immediately display them in the gallery when they're done. If you want to learn more about jQuery file upload, I encourage you to check out the documentation in the wiki, especially this options page, because it includes a lot of uh, reference information about the various options you can pass in to the function call. Also, there's some documentation on setting Rails up with the UI version of jQuery file upload. Now, there's quite a bit of code involved here, especially in the view layer, but you might want to check it out, and hopefully uh, covering the basics here in this episode gives you a better understanding of what's going on here. Well, that's it for this episode on jQuery file upload. Thanks for watching.